Hey guys, Kat here, welcome back to my channel. Today I am kicking off 9 Japanese Nightmares, my Japanese horror TBR. So I don't read that much horror and actually I don't really have a stomach for gore. So that means that if people are like, there are severed hands in the refrigerator, I'll be fine. If people are like, the blood was gushing out and it went everywhere and it painted on the walls, I would probably be like, Hugh! and uh, put the book down. So there's a certain way that people have to write for me to be able to get through it, but like things that are really dark or really twisted or really violent, I'm usually completely fine with. It's like if it's very gory that I'm like, please, please have mercy. Please just don't mention the blood. You know, like, please, can we just dismember without blood? Because it's Halloween, I thought that I would mention some of the horror books that are on my TBR, more so because I keep hearing about them in Japan and I see them constantly on the bookshelves, but I just, like, am really nervous to pick them up. So I will do a video later on this month about the creepiest, like, the most twisted creepy tales I've ever read, and there are definitely a lot of Japanese books in that one, so check it out. But this one is about ones I haven't read, they are on my horror TBR. So without further ado, let's just get into it. These are in no particular order. Okay, so number one on my horror TBR is probably no surprise to anyone, and it is Battle Royale by Koshin Takami. This is one of the more popular books that has been um, translated out of Japan. So it is Hunger Games, kind of like before Hunger Games, about a group of students and they're put on an island and told to fight to the death. And this mo this book was made really popular by the movie of it, which became kind of a cult classic in the West, and it is known for its extreme violence. I mean, they're all literally fighting to the death. The nice touch is like they're all in their school uniforms still and there's a lot to be said for lost innocence and I think it's just going to be really gory, ultra violent and probably creepy. So looking forward to that one. Next up is Parasite Eve by Hideaki Sena. So this one I have heard amazing things about. Um, a friend of mine who translates uh, English and Japanese works, he really, really likes this book. And it was made popular because it is also made into like a video game, I believe, of the same name. And it is basically if you took Ghost in a Shell and combined it with Frankenstein. And I mean, I love both of those separately, so I am super keen for Par Parasite Eve, Ghost in a Shell, Frankenstein, boop, perfect horror baby. Okay, so next up on this list is Confessions by Kanae Minato. This book is basically the cherry on the top of any Japanese horror list. It deals with a teacher and her daughter is killed by her students. I'm not sure if it's accidental or intentional, but either way, she sets out to get her mother effing revenge and it is supposed to be really twisted and all of the twists and turns are supposed to be really unpredictable and there's supposed to be a lot of violence and a lot of horror and a lot of creep factor so I'm really into it and I hope that I read it. All of these books I am, you know, recommending to you with a grain of salt because like I said I am not like a huge horror lover so I might get around to like one a month and during the daytime when people are in my house. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to read it at night because I'm a huge baby. Okay, so the next book on this list is very creepy because it is a true account. And it is People Who Eat Darkness, The Fate of Lucy Blackman by Richard Lloyd Perry. So I want to read you the synopsis because I don't want to get anything wrong because this one is, like I said, a true account. An incisive and compelling account of the case of Lucy Blackman. Lucy Blackman was a tall, blonde, and 21-year-old girl. She stepped out into the vastness of Tokyo in the summer of 2000 and disappeared forever. The following winter, her dismembered remains were found buried in a seaside cave. I know that uh, Perry compiled police accounts and personal testimony, and he really dug into the case, and I think it is going to be really creepy, and I don't know if I will read this one because I know it is true. I definitely think it would haunt me, so I think it definitely deserves a spot on this list. And just the name itself is really cool. The People Who Eat Darkness, I think, is just a phenomenal name. Uh, also for, uh, you know, a band, a very angry band, or a quiet band. Either or, really. Okay, so the next up is The Summer of the Ubume by Natsuhiko Kyogoku. It follows a supernatural investigator, and he is kind of like an exorcist. The catch is he doesn't actually believe in ghosts, so normally he sets up a case and then 
uh, basically brings out the clues and then solves it. Basically, he's kind of like a con artist of sorts. But this case deals with inabume, which if you don't know is a Japanese term for a pregnant woman who dies. And basically they believe if a pregnant woman dies, um, a ghost will rise from the corpse and haunt the land and the living. So he encounters a woman that has been pregnant for 20 months and things kind of go in a very creepy way from there. And I heard that the story itself is kind of like a slow meandering and then the end is just like BAM! Twisted! And I especially love stories where they are uh, unique to Japan and so obviously the tale um, The Summer of the Ibume deals with a Japanese concept of folklore, the Ibume. So I think it will be really creepy and totally Japan. So the next up on this list is Ryu Murakami's works, and I have two for you. Um, so Ryu Murakami I have some mixed feels about because I have tried to read uh, another of his books and I had to like stop multiple times because it is uh, almost transparent blue and it was so visceral and so graphic that I couldn't actually stomach the content and what I'm talking about is uh, drug use and so I have a pretty big fear of needles so in that story there was a lot of drug use and I just like I could not it no 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 so also but the way he writes is so engrossing and just gets you like right in there that I was just like so grossed out and so I just couldn't which leads me to piercing <laughs> a novel that has a needle on the cover. So yeah, don't know how that's gonna go. Probably not well. Sigh. Anyway, it Piercing is a novel that deals with uh, two people who were abused as children and then in their adult life they continue to abuse and do dark things to each other. So I think that just from the synopsis it sounds really effed up and uh, dark because Ryu Murakami is pretty dark. Um, and he's well known for Almost Transparent Blue which won him a lot of awards and he wrote it in university. And also the next book, which I'm going to mention, In the Miso Soup, which is known as a psychosexual thriller. And it's really popular abroad, kind of a cult classic, not so popular in Japan because Japanese people don't really like kind of sorted things to like be really popular because it makes, you know, Japan look bad. This story deals with a tourist who hires a man to tour him around kind of the sex industry and the nightlife of Tokyo. And as he's going around, there is also a serial murderer that is also going around and killing people. And I think things get interwoven from there. And I just know it is really gritty, really sexual, and really dark and violent and gory. So I don't want to know what's in the miso soup, but I kind of do. So I'm really hoping I can get through at least one of those books. At least one of them maybe won't have needles or excessive gore. Maybe I'm hoping for too much. I mean, this is like a horror TBR. So without further ado, let's get into my last two horror recommendations. And they are by the king of Japanese horror, Otsuichi. So, first title, Summer, Fireworks, and My Corpse. This is a collection of short stories that are really effing creepy and just sound <laughs> really brutal. So for instance, a bunch of severed hands are found in a refrigerator and go. Yeah. A boy is buried alive. And go. So dismembered parts of a corpse are found. And go. So Otsuichi is known for his extremely dark and extremely sadistic kind of storylines. So I think if you're looking for something extremely dark, as this list has gone on, I've gotten kind of, I've saved the darkest for last. So if you really like, like, the very dark, like, the alpha dark, the like dark matter dark, I would go with Ryu Murakami and Otsuichi. And the final book on this list is maybe possibly the darkest and it is Goth by Otsuichi. So Goth deals with a case where the dismembered body parts of a person are found nailed to a tree and 
the torture and the murder of different people are known to the media. And what happens is there are two teenage boys who are kind of brought together via their love of torture and death and following and trying to copycat. So I think if you are into all of the things that make the horror genre what it is, i.e. gore, blood, mystery, horror, suspense, twisted plot lines, and effed up people, then Otsuichi is your man and any of these books would probably be up your alley. So yes, this wraps up my nine nightmare novels for my Japanese horror TBR. And I hope that you have a very creepy and very horror-filled Halloween. In a fun way, not in like a murder and death way. You know what I'm saying? So if you enjoyed this video and you chuckled or you found a book that you want to read, then please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. So I hope you learned something new about Japanese culture or that you found a new creepy horror read to add to your TBR. Thanks so, so much for watching. Happy reading. Bye!